Good afternoon, my most beautiful babes and babettes. I'm your resident active advocate, and today I would like to talk to you about The Princess and the Frog. I only just saw this movie for the first time in my life this morning, and there's a lot to unpack. First of all, I want to give Disney some props where they're deserved, because welcome to the 21st century, this movie has Disney's first ever black princess in it. And I love that. Keep doing that, Disney. It's not forced representation if you actually do it well. The bulk of what I want to discuss in this movie has to do not so much with race, but with class division. I want to talk about capitalism. I am anti-capitalist. I am not a communist, okay? Because I am also an anti-authoritarian, and communism is an authoritarian system. I would definitely put myself on the anarchic left. So think people like Noam Chomsky. Think people to a certain extent like Gandhi. I would be with them. MLK, same thing. But in this movie, um, the very first kind of interesting thing, okay? The bad guy. His name is Dr. Facilier, okay? New Orleans is in Louisiana, which was colonized by the French. The French word for easy is facile. And I don't mean easy as in promiscuous. I mean easy as in simple. I don't know whether this name would have a linguistic tie-in, but Facilier could be a derivation of the word facile because Facilier is basically characterized as the opposite of Tiana. He takes the easy way out in order to get money and influence and power, and namely people under his control. The whole point of capitalism is not to grow rich, but is to grow powerful. But capitalism sees the two as interchangeable. If you are rich, you will be powerful. If you are powerful, you must be rich, in theory. All right, so I want to talk first about what the movie does really well. The movie does Tiana really well. I love her character. She's a very, very good character. She comes up from, uh, she comes up from nothing, from a standout family, uh, family. Her father and mother bust their butts to try and make a life for themselves and for their child. The father especially is portrayed as doing this. He never takes a break. And then he goes off to war and is killed in state sanctioned violence. Violence. I am also very, very rigidly a pacifist. I believe that war and capital punishment are what I call state sanctioned murder, but it's only okay when they do it. That's the problem. If you do it, it's not okay. If the state does it, it's fine because that's their business and their business is, you know, more important than ours. I am speaking, by the way, from, I have to acknowledge this, the very privileged perspective of being white, living in Canada, and being profoundly middle class. I am actually capable of working my way up into a good position in life. I am in the process of doing that right now. I like my job. I find my work rewarding. I have an education. And this isn't me bragging. This is me making statements of fact. There are the vast majority of people in the world who are literally not able to do that, and that is because of capitalism. So capitalism, if we shall give it a loose definition, is ye olde pyramid, which y'all know I love, um, with the very rich at the top, and then you get progressively poorer as you go down. But with the shape of the pyramid, there are fewer people at the top than there are at the bottom. Uh, than there are at the bottom. Um, there are going to be far, far more people at the bottom than at the top because money, as connected to power, remember, money is a finite resource. Capitalism 
is an extension of and the offspring of colonialism. Therefore, it's actually a lot easier for white people to make it in the world. It is. It objectively is. And especially in North America, because America as a nation, and then Canada by extension, we're younger than America. Um, I would also throw Mexico in here too, because they were colonized by the Spanish, and they were also European capitalists. America is a capitalist country. Canada is a capitalist country. Mexico is a capitalist country. But you will see that the vast majority of wealth resides in America. The richest people in the world are white males, statistically speaking. Another thing about statistics is that the idea of the American dream is objectively false, and here's why. The American dream says that here anyone can make it, and I'm basically taking this, by the way, line by line from a channel called Innuendo Studios. He's great, go look him up. But what he says about this is that the American dream is that here anyone can make it. You work hard enough and you last long enough in the rat race and anyone can become a millionaire. Nowadays, because of inflation, it would probably be billionaire because millionaires are not that rich. They're a lot richer than most people, but not that rich compared to how rich you can get. Here's the rub. Anyone can, but everyone can't. Money, as I say, is a finite resource, and the entire conceit of capitalism is to keep money flowing up the pyramid. Those who are already at the top have the resources that they need. Those who are at the bottom cannot have the resources they need because the people at the top have them. And the people at the top are not going to give them away because to give away your money in a capitalist system is to give away your power. And people like power. People like having influence. People like having a say in how their home, in how their city, in how their country is run. With Tiana, you get the manifestation of the American dream, the idea that if you work hard enough, all of your dreams can come true because she works her butt off for her dream. At the beginning of the movie, you see her refusing opportunities to go out with her friends, you know, and the whole excuse mine of, oh, I can't go out dancing, I have two left feet. Oh, I can't go to this event, I have to work tonight, just like every other night, because it's what her father did. She learned by example that hard work will get you what you want eventually. Eventually being the key word here. He was killed in war, so he was not able to get what he wanted. Tiana, however, being still alive, wants to fulfill his dream of opening a family restaurant. And she wants, she wants her own place, you know, she wants to be in charge. Currently, where she is, is that she is a waitress in a diner in New Orleans. Or New Orleans, wow, New Orleans, sorry. Um, and she is patronized by a bunch of richer than her white people and richer than her black people, okay? So even within the restaurant itself, you see class division. There is a character in this movie who I have to admit I like, but also dislike, and for different reasons, or even for the same reason. Charlotte is Tiana's best friend. They grew up together. You can see a very, very, very rigid class divide between the two of them, though. Charlotte, little white girl. Tiana, little black girl. Tiana's mother works as a seamstress and likes to make, or is employed to make clothes for Charlotte and her family, as well as for many other people, I would assume, right? But you see right from the get-go that Tiana and her family are poorer than Charlotte's family. Charlotte is spoiled. She is definitely spoiled, and she is given whatever she wants, especially by her father. I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with being rich, okay? There is nothing wrong with being rich. There is nothing wrong with being poor, except that if you are poor, people will look down upon you, and you will not get what you want no matter how hard you work. And here's where the movie actually does this right. Because when Tiana 
almost has enough money for the restaurant, it's taken from her. It's taken from her, and she's not able to go through with her dream yet again. And there's that brilliant song. Her actress, whoever plays, voices Tiana, I don't know who the actress is, she has an amazing singing voice. There's that wonderful number almost there. And the whole idea of that song is, as I say, the idea of the American dream. If you work long enough and hard enough, you will make it wherever it is, wherever you want to be. The rigid individualism of America does allow for one to have individual dreams and the top looks different to everyone. So you might want to be the president of the, of the United States. Good luck, because statistics show only X kind of person can be the president or is likely to be the president. All Tiana wants, and it's a fairly simple dream, is to open her own restaurant, okay? However, here's where the Disney formula kicks in, and this is where the movie starts losing me. Prince Naveen, very rich, very spoiled, not independent at all. He gets turned into a frog by the magic of the aforementioned Dr. Facilier, who has gotten, as I said, all of his power and influence through the use of dark magic. They actually call it voodoo, and I don't want to get into this, but voodoo is actually a religion from island cultures, like indigenous island cultures, from, you know, like the South Pacific kind of thing. I don't want to get into the ramifications of that kind of cultural theft, um, because it's too much to unpack, and I don't know enough about the South Pacific, nor do I know enough about voodoo itself to be able to touch on this properly, but the whole idea is that the movie is saying you should work for what you want. And if you go about it in any other way, if you go about it specifically through dirty tricks, the way Facilier does, you're not going to get what you want, and you're not going to get what you need. I'll touch on that point later. But Naveen, this very spoiled, pampered prince, is turned to a frog later on by Facilier, and meets up with Tiana when her dreams have just been ruined, and she actually uses... Charlotte's method of getting what she wants, which is the old Disney standby of when you wish upon a star. Tiana just says to herself, I cannot believe I'm doing this. You know, my philosophy is to work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard. She starts wishing upon the star and immediately encounters Naveen. So the movie is interesting from here on out because it kind of subverts its own themes. So Tiana kisses Naveen under the assumption that, and he says to her, you know, I need you to break the spell. Unfortunately, the spell works backwards and turns Tiana into a frog. So they're chased away from the city and then they have to get back and also get back to being human. So they go to find this old witch who lives out in the bayou, in the swamps, and, um, they do eventually find her. She is amazing. I love this woman because she is a blind 175-year-old. And she's amazing because she says to them, I could probably give you what you want, but it's not going to be what you need. This movie makes a very sharp distinction between what you want versus what you need. Tiana realizes later on that her father never got what he wanted. But he had what he needed. He had love. He had a family. He had a home. He had good food on the table. And, you know, like, in this sort of black and white line-drawn flashback that Tiana has, you see her when she's a very young child and her father is still alive. And he's the one who says, you know, I really love good food on the table because food brings people together, which is pretty much universally true. Every culture, to some degree, revolves around food, because we all need food to stay alive. And if it's going to be a necessity of life, you may as well make it pleasurable. So it's a very social thing for humans to do, to eat together, and we make ourselves closer by doing so. And it's the reason why, really, every supper I've ever had at home has been around the table with my siblings, and then after they moved out with my parents, right? 
but um, I'm lucky in that regard. But Tiana wants the restaurant. What she needs is human to human connection and human togetherness. The problem I have with how this is handled is that later on, she and Naveen fall in love, of course, because Disney formula. Um, when she consents to marry him and they have the ceremony and they kiss, it breaks the spell on both of them and they both turn back into humans because the condition, classic fairy tale, is that you need to kiss a beautiful princess in order to turn back into a human. And in her case, to kiss a prince to turn back into a human. When she marries him, she becomes a princess by marriage, right? So they kiss, they become humans again. And it is not through her hard work that she opens the restaurant eventually. It's through his money. I have a problem with this. And I think even Disney has a problem with this in the idea of the movie, because in the movie, Naveen even says to her, I'm like a baby. I can't do anything for myself. And one of the observations that I made, actually, is that the richer you are, the more people you have to do stuff for you. Therefore, the more infantile you are. Therefore, the less independent you are. What I really like about the, what the movie is doing here is that it is saying money cannot buy you happiness, much less can it buy you independence. It will actually buy you bondage. But at the end, again, it subverts its own theme by giving Tiana everything she ever wanted through Naveen's money and influence. I don't like that. I really don't. So this movie is very in-depth. Like I say, there's a lot to unpack here, but it's also very self-contradictory. Like, it's internally contradictory, because working hard might eventually get you what you want, but we know it won't, and in the real world it won't either. There's like a 2% margin of error for people born into poverty to make their way up to being rich in the world. 2% likelihood that anyone in my audience is going to do that. Have fun. And that applies to me as well. Have fun, right? Not that I was born into poverty. Like I say, I'm, I am profoundly middle class. And I'm not saying that to brag. It's just a statement of fact. But it begins by saying, if you work really hard, you'll get all of your dreams. But then classic Disney formula kicks in. And while she teaches Naveen some measure of independence, he kind of makes her dependent on him because it is based on his money that she gets her dream, not based on her own hard work. But the movie also frames that as a problem because it frames Naveen as, you know, a man-child, basically. He flat out says, I can't do things for myself. You know, I, I don't know how. People have always done it for me. I've had people to feed me, to dress me, to drive me around. And it's, this movie's a bit of a mess, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's difficult to digest all these different messages that it's throwing at you. But the one message that it's definitely clear is the standby Disney formula that if you marry rich, all your dreams will come true. It happened to Snow White. It happened to Cinderella. It, it's now happened to Tiana. And I don't like that because that's not realistic. People who are born into poverty will very, very likely not marry rich. That's how capitalism works. It is designed to keep you in your place. In your place, I say in quotation marks. You're not going to get, um, I don't know, whatever. If you weren't married, Bill Gates. You're not going to get Bill Gates marrying a homeless woman. You know, it's not going to happen. And nowadays, it's tech, it's tech giants. Back in the day, it was based on monarchy. But it's the same structure, just, uh, just with different faces pretty much, and different kinds of royalty. It's royalty based on affluence rather than royalty based on blood. But good luck gaining your affluence if you weren't already born rich. Not going to work. Like I say, there's a 2% margin of error there. That's it. And I don't mean you have a 2% chance of getting rich. I mean that you have, like everyone has a 2% chance of getting rich. But the problem is, as I said before, there's a finite of amount of money in the world, 
and it's all already at the top. And there's the trickle down effect because of the structure of the pyramid, but it's not going to, you know, all come down at once. It basically, what you get is handouts from the top. And now I'm rambling, but that's the whole point of the system. You know, it's meant to keep the rich rich. It's meant to keep the poor poor. The poor get poorer, the rich get richer. That's the idea. And that's the kind of crap that I want to get rid of. Thank you very much. Have a good day. <laughs> So that's my analysis of Princess and the Frog. It was very interesting to me. I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't even talk about the side characters, my goodness, and I barely even talked about Facilier. But really he's a plot device. He's you know, like that's pretty much all he is. Just the whole idea of if you take the easy way out, you're not gonna make it. And you're not gonna get what you want, and you're not gonna get what you need either. So, yeah, that is Princess and the Frog, and tomorrow I will be talking about Tangled! This one is really interesting, too! Two very different psychological pro uh, profiles that I will be diving into, one of whom is one of Disney's most renowned villains. Fun times! But I don't actually like her. At all. Ugh. Um, alright, so, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a lovely, wonderful day, and I hope it's sunny where you are. Alright. Peace out, yo! Mwah!